This is Multiplaying, episode 26, recorded on March 1st and March 6th, 2010. Everybody online, looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows, this is Multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello? Uh... Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? Thanks for listening to Multiplaying. Tonight you have, or today, I guess it depends on when you choose to listen to your podcast. Hmm. Are Jay- you a crazy person? <laughs> <laughs> it's 4 a.m. You're listening to Multiplaying. <laughs> Jason. Hi. Hi, Jason. What are you drinking? I'm drinking currently whiskey and Diet Mountain Dew, which I'm on a whiskey Gross. kick. Apparently, you right are. You yeah. are. Steve. Hey, how's it going? What are you drinking? I got Diet Coke. Oh, and nothing and to fun with it. Diet Coke and urine. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> I'm Shannon, and I got Diet Verner's and what do I whiskey. got? What kind of whiskey? Jameson. Jameson. Okay. That's it's classy a- as shit. <laughs> it's a. It's like bistro, right? Yeah, it's classy as shit. Yeah, I saw that t- this week too. That was um, the uh, subtitle at the bistro, wasn't it? Yeah. Classy, classy as, shit. as shit. This is classy as shit. This is a classy as shit panini. <laughs> um, let's see. What you been playing lately? Okay, well, tonight, just so you know, to give you an upfront, you're going to want to listen through the what you've been playing because we do actually have a great interview with Brad Wardell of Star. We have content. On mm-hmm. Elemental. Yeah, there's content this week. It's very, it's insane. We have some good stuff going on. But, Jay? Yeah. What you been playing? Um, I finished up Heavy Rain, which I don't think we've talked since I finished I don't Heavy think you have, and no. it wasn't so much I wanted to slip my wrists. No, I... I you got... had the happy ending, the happy Hollywood ending. Yeah, I won't get into details, no, but I but had... it is possible. I just wanted to like let people know you don't have to kill yourself. No, you don't, but I've heard from multiple podcasts and talking to people like John, a.k.a. Paz, that there are some really bummer endings, and I got the pretty uh, good ending. You got the best one ever. Yes, I did. And did. one thing as I beat it that I really noticed, I had this whole intention of as I was playing that I'm going to beat this game and I'm going to go through and beat it multiple ways and um after that after getting my ending and playing it through i kind of said i don't think you should go back no i really i really don't want to because i got my ending i got my story and that game is so so story driven that i don't really want to see and i hate to lead you yeah i hate to lead you so much but like i just know for a fact like you played the first couple of hours to few hours of this game wondering if you wanted to continue because it was so depressing and so heartache-ish. Yeah. Um, you really had a hard time with, I don't know if I really want to go through this. And the ending, I know what ending you got and it was actually very fulfilling um, and, you know, happy story back ending and thank God because that's the only way I would enjoy it. If I had the other endings that I've heard of, is it? I don't think it'd be a very fulfilling experience for me for gaming, and I I don't oh. see why you'd want to go back and do it. I, exactly, I really don't. I mean, I that that's the story I got, and that's the story I really want to believe is yeah. that story. I mean, I mean, that game was fantastic as as we said, interactive drama, and I really I don't want to see it a different way. And also, not to get in the specifics of the story, but thinking back about the way the story ended up coming out, I, I would notice a ton of plot holes. And I really, I don't... Oh, uh, right. Yeah. And the developers, Quantic Dream, said that they don't want people playing through multiple times. They want you to hear, see your story and not really worry about your consequences. It's yours. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, and I, I totally understand what they're, what they're saying now. I, I had my experience with it, and it, I really enjoyed it, but I don't think I want to go back and play through again. So I got eight hours or so out of it. So I mean, but that was a very intense eight yeah, hours. I wouldn't like, trade that. That the time I spent with the game was incredible. It was a great <laughs> storytelling experience. I have some issues with the story, but I really had fun with the story. So it's now time to take it back to GameStop and get as much as you possibly can. Yeah, I already did that. I already you did. did that. Yeah. Well, and they have that that fifty percent 
you know, bump up going on that I went back and I traded up for Battlefield Bad Company 2, which I've been playing. And that's that's a lot of fun. Um, the story is, I love the first Bad Company and the story is pretty good and the multiplayer is really good. I've also been playing some, I went back to War, Warhammer with my trial. <gasps> Gasp, Gasp and shock because... Oh my. No way, I, I have to tell you. It was Monday. No, no, no. It was Thursday? It was Thursday. And I came home from work, and I Jason's downstairs in the basement doing laundry, and I walked downstairs, and I'm like, well, I have something to tell you. And he's like, what? And I'm like, well, I re-upped for Warhammer today. He goes, oh. And there's this big, long pause, and he looks at me. He goes, well, I re-upped on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. I, think, I don't remember if it was, uh, which one of you it was, but somebody, I think it might have been Jason that emailed, uh, private messaged me on the forums and said something about playing it again. I was like, yeah, I was like, I actually was looking, like, the night before, I had been looking at the Endless Trial stuff. I haven't resubbed or anything, but I am, I have, uh, jumped on a couple times to play the Endless Trial just to see if what's changed with the game and, um, what if it's in, like any different than what I remember it? If it's, it feels like uh, getting back on a bike. But yeah, what do you yeah. guys been thinking of it? Um, I I I haven't done any of the tier four stuff. I've been reading about some of the changes. Which the thing that put me over in the subscribing was the T four changes, where it's less of a instance, more of an RVR scenario, but. I haven't done any of that. I've only done T1, T2, and I don't know. It's the same. I yeah. I, I haven't done a, a lick of PVE. I've only I've gotten in the game. I've, I've queued for scenarios are gone and to open RVR. And the one big thing that they've changed that I really like is it will not when when you used to be under level and open RVR, it would bump you up to a certain level. So if you're in T2, like if you're in bump tier you one, you'd go to eight. Yeah, and, and like T2 would bump you to 17. Now it bumps you up to the maximum level no matter what. So you, you'll you walk into T1, you'll be 11. You'll walk into T2, you'll be 21. 21. Yep. Which I really like. And, and fighting, I really noticed that I'm, I'm 14 on my engineer, which I've been playing primarily. Because I, I just, I don't know, you ever get the urge to just play a certain class in an MMO? You really yeah. don't care about the other things. Like, I've got... Play an engineer in, T- in uh, Team Fortress 2 and all what? that. I'm like, I want to go play that dwarf. What uh, server are you playing uh, Order on? Uh, I'm on Gorfang right now. I've switched between three servers because... You're on Gorfang? No, wait. I'm on Iron Rock. I don't even remember where the fuck I am. I'm on Iron, I'm on Iron Rock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was my fake uh, interview skills there, but go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm... Um, I've been, I've been playing some open RVR, which there's been quite a bit of, and scenar- queuing up for scenarios, and those have been popping really well. And uh, I don't know, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, those are always the best parts of Warhammer. The yeah, and and T two open RVR. Right. And yeah. You were I mean, you I, were saying you were saying that today that you what, you said you were thirty seven. Yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking about that after you said that, like after we were done chatting, I was like, man, you know what? I mean, that was a good point because I think my uh, Iron Breaker was 35 when I walked away. I was like, man, that would be something just to like maybe sub for a month, just knock him into 40 and just say, okay, it. there it is. Yeah, how long Head did it out. take? I don't know, especially now. I, I have, I don't know, I'm not even sure if they've lessened the amount of experience it takes or how that is. But I'm not really sure. But you know, the other you, part you, of you, it is I don't want to read anything about it. I don't want to read blogs. I don't want right. to read anything at all about how it is now i just want to go in have fun and experience it and then that's well, the it. kicker is is there is a lot more blogs i mean i like i wrote something up earlier this, uh, a few days ago there's a crap load of people that are starting to run war blogs again um it's just it's nuts to see that the game is having somewhat of a revival and i don't know if they're new people to the game uh, or if they are people that have been playing for a while or went back and decided to start blogs because of it but well, I'm people playing. It, it seems it. really cool that there are people on the servers. Granted, the depressing part when I logged in, there are only four servers, yeah. um, which is a huge. I mean, back when that game was in its heyday for uh, like 30 days, maybe. Right. That I mean, <laughs> you had a ton of them, but it's really. But cool it, there was there was way too many though. Yeah, yeah, that was a the thing. They needed to be a lot less, and you really wonder 
if they hadn't overshot and had a better server population, what would the game be like now? But it's really cool to log in and see shit going on in every tier. Which right. I don't uh, think the the multitude of servers was that big of a factor. No, maybe not. But it's only four servers now, and when you log in and you see a lot of chatter, that really does reinforce your thought because you have that when you go into an MMO. Yeah. If you log in, there's nobody talking. You're like, God, am I the only one playing this game? Like, right. do I need to leave? Am I the am I the idiot? So, I mean, it is kind of re- re- refreshing to see that people are there playing. And yeah. when you queue, I've been queuing, and shit's been popping. That's a big thing mm-hmm. right now. I don't know shit, how it is. Shit, shit's been popping, huh? Yeah, I want to get in that shit. Shit's <laughs> been <laughs> popping. <sighs> so, I don't know. That's what I've been playing. Oh, God, they're on Mandarin's Keep. What? Everyone get here. If you're in, listening to the podcast, log in. <laughs> oh my god, look at you Saturday playing night. war. You're so cute. On your order <laughs> side. That's the thing. Jason's still, he's playing his order characters on Iron Rock. I am playing my destruction characters on Volkmar. And, uh, yeah. That's that's where we're at. Right. Guildless. <laughs> so, Steve, what you been playing? Uh, let's see. What have I been playing? <laughs> Been playing uh, Global Agenda. Global Legend is awesome. Closing it on twenty two. And I had I had the absolute best match last night. I think I'm I only nine. played one match last night. What? <laughs> I'm nine. You know, I had uh, jumped on him for like one match real quick last night, and usually I get like maybe ten kills in a match. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And last night I was just mowing people down. I got thirty three kills. Damn. Uh, the next person highest to me was uh, nine. Oh, that would have been me. It was hilariously great. The, the medics on that match. Did you have a boner? Awesome. I had a boner for the medic. <laughs> it was great. I. What was that? What are you doing? <laughs> what was that? I was laughing so hard. My headset fell off. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Did his boner hit you in the face? <laughs> Evidently, came through the, the headset. <laughs> Sorry about your ear. <laughs> oh. Well, goodness. I don't know where to go. <laughs> what else have I been playing that didn't give me a boner? This uh, door is buckling under the assault if you are near <laughs> Mandra's hold. We're ramming it with the boner. We could really use some help. Calabar is here, this archmage. <laughs> I shoot things, the Shadow Warrior, which is a classy name. I shoot things with a Z. <laughs> is he in he the Golden Girls? Things, but it's not helping us, so we could use some help. <laughs> You'd really and, miss a solid. And I played uh, Dirt 2. Played some of that. Uh, uh-huh. but, That's yeah. Yeah. How's that going for you? <laughs> it's going great. Uh, it's all like... Does that game right. have off-road racing? It does. It's all off-road. Really? My tummy yeah. hurts. <laughs> it's dirt. <laughs> well, that's great. But that's what I've been playing. Good for you. And all the playing. You... <laughs> <laughs> and Jason had a great interview with Brad Wardell of Starduck, and we're going to insert that. All right, uh, this is multiplaying. Uh, tonight we have uh, Jason. Hello. Uh, this is me, Steve. And we have a special guest. It's uh, back for the second time, uh, Brad Wardell, CEO of Starduck. How's it going, Brad? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, good, no good. Second interview. Indeed. All We're right. going to be better this time, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Like, not. <laughs> Third one I think I have to shave my legs or something for, don't I? Yeah. That's that's the hot date. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, lately I, I, I'm in the StarCraft 2 beta, so I've been playing, uh, uh, spending a lot of time in um, admiring the mechanics of StarCraft 2. Oh, yeah? How's that going? Good. I, I tell you, the the Battle.net. You know, I hadn't played uh, on Battle.net since Warcraft Three, and it's just amazing how far it's come in the last couple of years. Right. You know, getting into having multiple leagues. They have a gold league. You know, I mean, now 
you know, most every other game I ever play, I, and not to turn this into a uh, StarCraft uh, advertisement, <laughs> uh, but you know, every other game you go on and you just get wiped out. Mm-hmm. And it's if unless you're one of the hardcore, and that's one of the things that turns people off on multiplayer playing. And yet on StarCraft, even though it's a beta, mind you, so the o- online audience is much smaller. After a few placement games, where of course I got beaten like a drum, I then got into. I was put into the Bronze League, Division X, and each division only has 100 players. And now I'm playing people of roughly my own skill level, and it's really fun. It's like, That's okay, cool. these, these people are actually playing the game as I understand it, whereas when I was in the placement games and I'm playing against some guy in South Korea, and three minutes into the game, they're coming at me with these things. Like, are these units in the game? I've never had <laughs> <Are you hacking? laughs> What happened here? How did I die? I don't understand. That's really cool to hear because I've I've always loved RTSs, but I hate the online just because I'm so out outmatched every every time that to hear that is really cool. And then now you yeah the experts don't even play the game as you I remember uh, a company of heroes was a game I really enjoy and oh, I yeah. thought I was pretty darn good at it. I'd play with my friends and would dominate them, but I'd go online. And then within, a, you know, I, I remember the first time I went online, I played, and I, I like, okay, I'm going out, and and they had barbed wired me into my base, <laughs> like, <laughs> and they're like, what, <laughs> what happened here? I, and of course, uh, I got through the barbed wire, I had to upgrade, but by that point, they were, you they were done. Tanks. Yeah, the tanks were already there. It's like that. That's how it is in StarCraft when you're playing the really good yeah. players. They go, oh, well, they realize that if you c- crawl up, that there's a, a way in this map, there's a flaw in the map that if you go. And you know, and, and hug the edge. You can actually go around, and, and they figured out the tiles Jeez. to get you know, worm their way into your base. Whereas, I mean, yeah, it, it, they've it, it's a science, and it which plays nothing like a game that involves base ships and guns or anything. It's something totally different. It's like does, I'm playing. Does, does I, I'm in the Matrix, lot? right? And I see the real world. They're playing the Matrix, and they see the code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it feel a lot different than the first StarCraft? You no, know, it's StarCraft. I mean, oh, okay. that's one of the things that everyone's going to complain about. And in fact, that when I came in the first day, I was like, oh, I can't believe this. Or they didn't. Uh, it's exact like old StarCraft. And then you, you come to appreciate, oh, yeah, it's, it's, that's good. It's a good Because game. I understand it. That's good. Yeah, that's, I've heard a lot of people, who, for, uh, the pros in that have said that they got, those games got to a level where they couldn't really understand and enjoy them anymore. And taking it back in this, they, can, they understand StarCraft. They can enjoy mm-hmm. it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah, and in fact, on uh, Elemental, we've been taking a lot of cues from StarCraft because there's a lot to appreciate in there. And go, you know what? I, like, because uh, Elemental is a four X. It's a turn-based game, and we want yeah. people. You know, its focus is is a single-player game to be sure. But I want the multiplayer on that. I want Elemental to be the first four X turn-based game that people actually play multiplayer in mass. And to do that, you have to really look at what StarCraft did. And because even though the StarCraft online community is only a couple thousand people or a few thousand people, I don't know how many beta keys are out there so far, but it's not huge. It's a really good online experience. Whereas in other games, and then I'm going to include Demigod, our own game, Sins, uh, every other strategy game out there, you have to have such huge numbers for it to be fun because right. they don't they don't put in – they don't really – it's basically the multiplayer game is the single player game, but with other people. Right. And and you know off you go. There, where the bots and the humans are interchangeable, and that doesn't work. And I think that's really the the genius of Blizzard. Right. For for those for the, our listeners that may not know what Elemental is, could you explain it a little bit? Sure. Elemental is our upcoming fantasy strategy game that comes out this August or September, depending on you know how we're doing. Right. And in it, the player chooses the, – the player is in the game. So when the first question you at, are asked when you start a new game is, who are you? And you can either ch- uh, choose a wizard that's already on there, uh, basically a, you know, you're a sovereign. So they could be a wizard. They could be a great warrior. Or you can literally design your own. So when you're designing your own, it's kind of like creating your own Xbox 360 character or sim where uh, – you, know, you decide how they look and how they, you know, what all their abilities, their strengths and weaknesses, and all that. And then you start out the game, and you are literally at the at the first turn of the game. There you are. The world there is there aren't any cities around you. There's nothing. It's just you. <laughs> oh, cool. And so, uh, you know, one of their first decisions is: Are you going to explore the world and try to get some stuff really quickly, or are you going to build a city 
you know, found the city and start uh, researching tech and all that kind of stuff. That sounds pretty uh, massive. Like, how big is how big is the like the map size and how large is the world that you're going to be in? Well, that's where a lot of our effort has gone in the engine for the past uh, two years while we're designing the underlying engine. Is that we wanted a game that is really fun to play if it's really tiny, but also be able to support maps that are so huge that it could take years to finish. Oh, awesome! Wow. Yeah. So, like the the large scale maps, uh, we had a we're um, we were talking to this is back in the day. Uh, Soren Johnson, I don't know if you know him. He used to work. He was designer of Civilization Four over at Firaxis. Okay. Yeah. He's at EA now, and uh, he was. We were going over talking about Elemental with him. This is some years ago when we were just doing the engine, and he was helping us with algorithms to solve problems with river generation and that. And uh, so you know, we're st- still we, we we have their you know, we we're, we're stealing <laughs> their algorithms for that, so to speak, and. Uh, you know, we were, we looked at the map size, and it turns out like the the largest size map in Elemental is something like ten times bigger than the largest size map in Civilization Four. Oh my gosh! So that you can have and you can have thirty two players playing it, either single player, you know, either a combination of AI players and people playing okay. the game. Hmm. Or or competitively or. Yeah, yeah. What a and so in order to make that work, because you go well, thirty-two people is practically a massively multiplayer game. Well, I would picture that typically you'd only have a handful of people on that, but you could have thirty-two human beings actually playing it. But the wow. only way to make that work is to have the multiplayer. You can't just do simultaneous turns. You have to go a little bit. You have to actually make the turn time and that be part of the game. And so we've been playing around with things on on everything from how long you get to take your turn to other kinds of things to make that actually fun. And the games don't exist on your computer. They exist on servers, either ones that we've set up ourselves, which will be the default. Mo- you know, most people would just, when they go and want to play a game, they're just going to connect to one of our servers. Uh, but right. if someone wants to set up their own server, they can do that and mod it. So if someone wants to make Middle Earth, obviously we can't set up Middle Earth. Right or or whatever, but if someone else wants to set up Corsican or or Middle Earth or whatever on their own server, they can do that, and then other people can join those servers as well. But the point is, is that because they're servers, it's actually more akin to a first-person shooter where you're joining a, a a dedicated server rather than a typical strategy game where some guy's hosting or connecting to their computer because. Now you can have these persistent games that could last months and months. You go, hey, yeah, well, let's, well, let's call it a day, and we'll come back to this game wow. you know, next wow. weekend and just continue where we left off. And it doesn't matter which machine it's on because it's all there's a whole bunch of servers, but it's all one global database. So if we had oh. like a guild group event, we could set up a, a game that only we could access and then play it over a series of weeks or months or whatever. Exactly. Uh, have you ever heard of the, you ever played a game on Twilight Imperium? No. Oh, it's a great board game. And we'd get together and play that on weekends. And it, it's one of those games that takes weeks and weeks and weeks to play. I mean, think 12 hours a day, you play it over a period of months. And that's what we're looking for here is that you go online, you go, oh, okay. And you it has to be set up with a minimum of fuss because that's one of the things that you know from multiplayer on a PC is that it can be, if it's a pain in the butt, you're going to lose a lot of people. So we want to make it so that here's my game, we join it, and we're up and going as quickly as possible. And that was one of the reasons why we decided to go with we're, us just hosting. You know, it's, It costs a bunch of money up front, but it's it, it just solves so many problems for the user. Hmm. So is it going to be something, with it being turn-based, is it going to be something that you set up the game, and if you have four or five people playing, I mean, you may play for so long at a night, but if you quit... And could you make it then that like one person comes back and says, "Oh, it's my turn" when they get on the game, and then they, they do their turn and then stop, and then the next person comes in and does their turn, like maybe the day later or whatever. Well, that's uh, more of a t- if we get turned by email, turn uh, play by email, we would have that. But in terms of actually coming in like that, probably not in the initial release, but long term, okay. we want to make it so that it's as casual as possible. So for now, it'd be something like as a release. As released, it would be more along the lines of everyone would have to log in to start. Yeah, to you, yeah. Keep, if, okay. if you want to keep playing, the whole the group has to come in and play. Okay, cool. Because otherwise, cool. a lot of time gets put into the you know the what's it called uh, policing 
the, right. the different things. Because remember, we're talking simultaneous turns. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a lot lost potentially if if one guy can come in and goes, aha, well, I, in my turn, I took over four of your cities because you yeah. weren't there. <laughs> you were sleeping. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. I mean, that works. That could very well work for us because in our smaller community, we do a lot of uh, like gaming nights. Like right now, we have a global agenda night that we do every Monday. I mean, that would that sounds almost perfect for us because we could say, okay, this night of the week, we all jump into the game and continue our our match. Oh, and we want to have modes where you could finish one of our uh, during the multiplayer beta. One of our objectives will be right away to test test games that take less than thirty minutes to play. Okay. Oh wow, that's cool. So, uh, I, I don't know if you ever played uh, Magic the Gathering. Oh but, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know, in Magic the Gathering, they have there are ways to make those games either be done very quickly or have them go a long time, depending on yeah. how you set up the rules. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're going here is that we want our big effort here is going to be can we make a turn-based strategy game that is over in 30 minutes as well as you know last months and months all by just modifying the rules and the maps gotcha and are all the maps they're all uh, random generated well in the uh, multiplayer in if it depends on the guy setting up the server if whether okay. they're going to be randomly generated or whether they're fixed okay. um in multiplayer, our intention on our servers is to have them be fixed. I mean, if you okay. play single player, you can have them randomly generated or use pre-existing maps or make your own or what have you. And if you set up your own server, you can do the same thing. But um, it's been our experience that people tend to, when they play multiplayer as opposed to single player, tend to like the idea that, okay, I'm playing and I know for sure that the other guy didn't set, you know, randomly get more far you know fertile lands and gems and stuff near them from what i have seen in the game i mean it looks uh, the, the even the look of it is a little bit more unique from uh, the standard rts it almost has a like a cell shaded quality um what was the the reasoning to go that route well what we want to do is we want to go we're, it's called illustrative um, okay I, well no i i used to call it cell shaded <laughs> and, and the okay. team corrected me um because they, they it is not cell shaded and uh it's uh, illustrated with I'm, I'm a programmer, so. Uh, but the rationale was one. There are two two basic reasons. One, by going with this art style, we could have the game look really pretty, but also run on very very low end hardware. Because one of our one of the requirements we have is that the game should run on a netbook, mm-hmm. which oh, means wow. yeah. I mean, we're talking very very low end hardware, but at the same time, we want to make it so that some with the latest greatest. Uh, NVIDIA or ATI card with their, you know, I mean, if ideally we want to, we're looking to, we're talking to Intel about doing a 64 bit version of the mm-hmm. game so that those people who play the game can have a much even richer experience. And the best way to, uh, Illustrative tends to let you ha- uh, scale more easily. If you try to go, for example, uh, a realistic look, well, you know, if it's realistic, it's either realistic or it's not, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. How do you t- what do you how do you tone down real realistic? Right. Look? And whereas with uh, illustrative, it's just the amount of detail you want to put into your illustration. Right. You know, you're drawing your sketch, right? You can, when it's illustrated, you can have it be very detailed or not very detailed, but it's all the way through. It has a nice, consistent style to it. So that was one reason. And the other reason is that it gives a distinctive look, right? It seems like when you look at these strategy games now, they almost all look the same, especially these medieval magic-type games. It's I can't tell one from the other. Yeah. But you see a screenshot of Elemental, you go, that's Elemental. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. One thing, one thing that I was reading about before was the um, the cloth map that, that's being used in beta, and I read that that will carry over, and that may play a big part in those people who have the, the netbooks or something. Like, they would see more of the cloth map and kind of where things go, whereas, and someone on a high end would see tons of detail? Right. I mean, at the very, very lowest of the level, you could just play on the cloth map. Okay. And, I mean, you can completely play the game that way. That's one of the reasons why the beta is being played with the cloth map with the engine disabled, because we want to make sure that we're not... As these developers, it's always very tempting to go, eh, we'll just have it be, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll put this here, and it's like, oh no, if you can't play in cloth map, then we can't you know, we can't do that. That's very do cool. You, do you have people playing the beta now on a netbook? 
Uh, we do internally, but we, oh, okay. uh, I don't know what the external beta testers are. The gotcha. biggest challenge on them, ironically, so far is that netbooks have a weird resolution. It's 1024 by 600. Mm. And all of our early assets, uh, user interface wise, were designed with 1024 by 768. So that's actually been a bit of a pain. Wow. So, yeah, and the game has a lot. Our engine right now, we have it's still pretty buggy at this stage. So there's a lot of memory leaks and weird things like that. Like uh, textures need to be a power of two to work on netbooks. And otherwise, you get really funky stuff. So we have to go through and you tell me, remind the artist, no, you cannot have a texture that's 420 by 350 because it's easier that way. It has to be 512 by 256 or 512 by, you know, it has to be a power of two. So at hmm. this point, you basically have a lot of artists who are just holding back. And <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. we uh, all of our artists, you know, before they export it into the game, they have it in the original vector format. So okay. it's okay. not that big of a. It's not like you have to throw anything out. Right. But right. Um, you know, it does require. We don't like. No one likes to waste any memory. But from a compatibility point of view, if you don't do fi- uh, some sort of power of two, you have you have compatibility versus optimization. You know, we don't want to waste memory, but we need compatibility trumps memory optimization. Gotcha. Is that? I mean, is the the resolution your biggest problem right now, or do you have other like hurdles that you have to overcome before the game is um, release worthy? Well, in terms of for netbooks, the uh, you know compatibility has been the the biggest issue. Performance gotcha. is not, performance is not is really not an issue because like you know a cloth map, it should technically speaking, should be able to play on a Commodore. You know, <laughs> <laughs> handy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it's pretty straightforward. But uh, in terms of, I, for example, one of the things we've been really having fun with with the beta, and is and this is having a, a big long open beta is that we've actually switched the economic system in the game two or three times, and we'll probably switch it another two or three times before the before we're through with the beta, and that's just one of those things you really can't do in a normal uh, development process unless you mm-hmm. have. Because you need you need lots and lots of player feedback, and so a lot of games that come out. I mean, you ever played a strategy game or what have you, where it came out and they have some goofy economic system, and you're like, "Well, how did this get through?" And uh, you know, and because some and what happens is that oftentimes, uh, on paper, economic systems make a lot of sense. You go, "Oh, of course that." You should be able to have to do this, this, and this, and this in order to build a unit. That makes perfect logistical sense. Mm-hmm. And then you build up the game and you release it, and then it falls apart because it's not fun. And because we have this open beta, uh, people can come back and say, well, yeah, but this isn't fun. And so like, even right now, we're going through our like fourth version of the economic system because we're, we're just trying out different ones. And every... You know, there, we, we can just put it on the table and, and go back to it if we want. There's uh, well, speaking of you're going uh, talking about the design. One thing that I thought was actually like that just popped out at me when I was reading through the list of the game features was that you could actually design your own units. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's a how big how in depth feature. how in depth can you get with that? Because that was immediately like, oh my god, this is like tabletop you can, you, incarnate. You can control their hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So um, yeah, let me get it. So uh, let's say you have, and not only can you control that down to their what clothes they're wearing. So here's a, I, I put my I have a screenshot on on the uh, on my blog. I, I designed. I put my wife in as a unit. <laughs> and <laughs> now when you to go to cloth map, it's a pewter piece. Oh so yeah. So seeing your your design as a pewter piece. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and you guys said you played Magic Gathering. So here here's yeah. how it works. So. You literally can design up your unit how what clothes they have, their armor, their their weapons, their helms, their everything you can imagine, uh, colorized and everything. You know what color hair they have, what color pants they have. Whether you know, it, depending on the race, some of them allow you to have women, female soldiers. So you can have men and women anyway. So you can do all that, and then when you get done, it brings up their their playing card. And you can mm-hmm. choose what background and what pose you want them to have in the card, and then give them a little quote. That's awesome. So for fun, I actually made a uh, I have I made a card called Killer Smurf because I made his skin blue, and I gave him uh, like a beard and and you know white beard. He looked like Papa Smurf, but he looked except that he's he had no shirt on or anything, and he's just got a sword. And he's like, and then uh, his quote is Papa Smurf doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. 
I know Jason was uh, had a question about the dynasty system. Oh sure. yeah, I was. Uh, you know, it just I was reading a little bit about how it can it can go from. You can basically create families. I just wonder if you could expand a little bit, explain that system a little bit. Sure. Well, in uh, in elemental, you your your character gets can get married, have children, and then you can then negotiate re- arrange marriages for your children. And they will in turn have children, and their children will eventually have children, and so on and so forth. And when these children grow up, they become effectively champions for your side hmm. or their side, depending on a number of factors. That, and they have their own attributes based on your sort of like breeding, right? They looks at what the traits of the parents were. And so you can end up with these champions running around who are related to you. So Papa Smurf would have green offsprings? I mean, not blue, I'm sorry, blue offsprings? Well, it'd be depending on the uh, the mother. Oh, well, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, one of the things we ran into that's almost an ESRB type issue is that um, in our game we have their other races. So you have the fallen, for example, and they have they have gray skin, and they're because it's not just visual; it's also the uh, the genetic algorithm takes has uh, will put together different animations too. You know, for how they walk around and how they you know their idle animation. Oh wow! It's, oh wow! So, well, yeah, well, it's neat until you actually see, oh, my God, my daughter and, and <laughs> my, my granddaughter is this, this little troll thing, a half, half human, half, you know, oh, it's yeah. not a pretty sight because there's nothing quite like seeing a, a fallen grandchild, which is more like, a, like I said, think of them like, think of Gollum, Mary, you know, and uh, Arwen <laughs> being married and what the offspring <laughs> yeah. might have looked like. And that's what you kind of get in elemental. We got, ran into an elemental, so we've we've been going back and forth on. We're probably going to allow you to marry your children off with the other species in the game. We're not. Gonna, we're going to say they're all biologically compatible, even though it's going to end up with some pretty horrific looking children. <laughs> Nice. Sorry, sorry, sweetie. Nobody's probably going to be taking you to prom. Yeah, yeah. It's it's because you know you see your grandchild, they're like, hey, they're literally <laughs> over, and 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 it's oh, it's not a pretty sight. Wow. I mean, you can put a dress on her, but uh, <laughs> you can dress it up. But yeah, <laughs> yeah you can put them in pretty clothes, but they're they're still they're still half Gollum. Yeah, well, that's uh, cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, what stage of the beta are you in right now? Well, and the public beta is, is still very, very primitive. We've gone out of our way to make sure the game isn't fun uh, so that people are focusing on well, Otherwise, people are going to play the game and right. not be yeah. uh, focusing on the game mechanics. So we'll take st- every beta, we take stuff out or we'll purposely you know, monkey with something. It's, uh, the next beta, which is late this month, is supposed to introduce multiplayer. And that's so we want to have because the game doesn't come out until you know end of summer. So we want to have lots and lots of time for people to try out the multiplayer setup to make sure it's bulletproof. The nice thing is because we're hosting the games, there there's no you don't have to open ports. There's mm-hmm. no monkeying around with your router. It just it, it just works. Now going back to to StarCraft, what you said a little bit. Someone like me who's not traditionally played a lot of of you know R, RTS games online. Why be will there be a matchmaking type of system? How advanced it is depends on how far, because uh, we're we're relying the the impulse reactor team is essentially in the process of developing. Think of it as a Battle.net type system, but for third parties to use. Okay. And hmm. so we're going to be using that. So hopefully, with any luck, you'll be able to just go on, press a button, and say, "Yeah, find me a one-on-one or a two-on-two or a five-player free-for-all or or a custom game with." 20 people and and just just do it and you know where i pick my faction and that's about it okay cool. i think definitely one thing that will lead me more likely i always tend to when i have to play those type of games one-on-one or even two-on-two is when i get really nervous because then i'm more specifically called out but the fact that you have that option of hey a five free-for-all i can kind of get lost in that and learn and not feel like a complete idiot, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I tend to like free for all, especially if you can get a big one. And we're one of the things I really want to push in this because because you know you gotta you gotta focus on our strengths. And our strength here is because we're hosting the games for the player. It's not a big deal from a bandwidth point of view to have uh, you know twenty people on a server because you know these servers have you know, 
a crazy amount of bandwidth already to them. So it's not a big deal for it to have 20 people on it. Well, there's no lag issue, especially since it's turn-based. So if there's 20 people on there and they're playing, you can be doing your thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's not that big of a deal if you lose or whatever. Hmm. Well, Jason's practically close enough to you. You can probably just take a pipe right to his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I shouldn't have well, any latency issues or anything. Yeah, that's right. Now, you're in Michigan, right? Yeah, I'm in uh, Flat Rock, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so I should be good. Now, there is a, a great deal of lore, it seems, behind the game, and uh, so much so that I actually just popped up on Kotaku today, right before we started the uh, recording, that Random House is involved in making some books. What's that? Random House. I read oh, that. Right. The announcement came out today? Yeah, they just got posted on Kotaku like oh, right before we started. I forgot. I, for some reason, I was thinking that was coming at the Game Developers Conference. Oh, <laughs> but uh, that's cool. Yeah, the, uh, the there, so the, uh, that's what I was working on when you called is uh, finishing up the book. Oh, cool! Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a now the book's not on the game. What Random House has done is they've set up the system where uh, their intellectual property, the content, the universe, let's say IP sounds so lawyerish. The uh, the game, you know, the universe that the game comes from is this centralized thing, and so books can be made from it. Uh, games. Uh, movies and and other sorts of things so the book isn't a book on the game but it's a book that takes place in the same universe gotcha well that is pretty cool but then what was cool is that whatever system that they're setting up for this is like you guys are the the first they're using your game as the first one for this new system yeah, we're the pilot program for this that is awesome so, and it's so we we've it's it's been a really wonderful um experience on that i've had a lot of fun working with them and I, I haven't ever written a book, but I always, I mean, I wanted to write a book. I mean, I wanted to write books on this universe, mm-hmm. but obviously I, I, yeah, I never had the opportunity. And in this case, Random House has been able to kind of teach me on a lot. Of, I mean, I write all the time. I mean, I, I te- technical documents and that, but not fiction. Right. And so they've been very helpful in helping me graduate and edit uh, me to being a decent writer. Well, that's great. That's awesome. At least I hope people think it's decent. <laughs> I think the story. I think people will really enjoy the story, though. I mean, there's a there is a lot of stuff there to this world that's been developed for years and years, and um, you know, it's all and you know, all of our titles have always come from the same universe. You know, Galactic Civilizations, Elemental, and so on. I mean, different time periods, but the same mm-hmm. universe. Was there lots of uh, fighting in it? Oh yeah. Okay, then people love it. Yeah, there's lots of fighting, <laughs> and lots of you know magic, and and you know good guys, bad guys, and all usual right. types of fantasy novel type stuff. Is there any estimate? Like, will that be out? You know, yeah, it, com- a- it comes out just before the game, oh. beginning of August. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, they already, it's already up on Amazon oh, and for like pre purchase. Yep, cool. It's gonna be a crazy feeling to have that type of thing going on with it. It is. I tell you the. Uh, if I had to do it over again, I would have really. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I enjoy, I really enjoyed writing. I've enjoyed writing the book, but holy cow, I have a wholly new respect for writers because it is. You cannot just sit down and crank out ninety thousand words and have it be any good. I mean, I've to get the ninety thousand words that was necessary for the book. I had to write probably three hundred thousand lines or not lines. Seems to listen to me. I sound like a coder. Three hundred thousand words, and then you know, rewrite, 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 rewrite over and over and then prune it down so that it was good because mm-hmm. it is it is so much to writing a good book so how many words did you end up with Ninety thousand and one. yeah you know it's ninety thousand, but i'm just saying <laughs> there's so much more writing and i guess a random house was has been instrumental because they have had writers there to help me out and 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 basically you know Tutor. school me so to speak in a kind of sense on on some of the stuff cuz when like i said my when you're trying to write a technical document the idea is to convey your information in as few words as possible mm-hmm. you know so i yeah. bullet points get it right up there whereas in fiction you have exposition mm-hmm. and uh, that so i would be more akin to say uh five warriors appeared he attacked Three died. Two were wounded. <laughs> not not quite that bad, but you know, boom, boom, boom. This is what happened, right? as opposed to, and then the you know the the spring smell of jasmine was in the air. <laughs> I'm like, what? What is that? What's jasmine? <laughs> is that that chick from uh from Aladdin? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is. 
Yeah. See, I think that would be the reverse. You talk about writing more words. I would be the one trying to get to 90,000, like, and, um, um, like, just leave it in there. Yeah, no, I didn't have any problem making the, the number of words uh, because there's just so much. It's a matter of of information overload and, and, right. and the telling of the story. It's like I, I'm a, my writing would be blatant. So their editors would come by and say, instead of just telling the reader that this, 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 this happened, you know, what about like this? And then eventually you know, I, it got to the point where I, I was able to do it on my own. But awesome. at first, they're, I mean, I've been working on the book for a year. So it's it's – you know, and which is uh, where I'm at first. Like, yeah, I just done it in a month because I mean, <laughs> ninety thousand words. That's nothing. I mean, yeah. I write, you know, I've, I've written columns for for magazines before, and they're like, yeah, we need twenty five hundred words. And I'd sit down after dinner and crank that out. Not right. going on my iPhone on the text pad. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's that's nothing. So it's yeah. you know, well, uh, one afternoon, ninety thousand words. You know, yeah, two weeks should be enough. And so. Yeah, you know, I would start turning in chapters, and I go, "Well," and they're, and they're so they were been so nice to me about it. But I could, you know, we're, they're very gentle. But it took so you can almost imagine it took a couple months for me to basically write out the book, and then the other another year to to make it a good book, wow. a good fiction fantasy story. Hmm. Yeah, but the end result has been so. It's just it is. I think people will really enjoy it. Very cool. awesome. And so my what, editors are. I got lucky on my um, on my helper. You know the ed, the editors I have. Um, they're the same editors who handle uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, series. awesome! Yeah, I don't know if you read out you know, Game of Thrones and. Oh yeah, yeah. But I got a lucky break in the sense that there's a he's writing a new book called uh, A Dance with Dragons. Mm-hmm. It's late. And my editors at Random House were supposed to be working on that book, but that book's been running like three behind. years late. Yeah, right. Well, so those guys got assigned to helping me, and so I had this. You know, I, I didn't. I wasn't just put off on just random guy, right, to help me out. Yeah, you I got, got lucky. The, yeah, I got really lucky that it was those guys to, that uh, you know, were involved with that project. And uh, so, and they understood the kind of book I wanted to write because I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. The, the dynasty system in Elemental is is ripped right from a Game of Thrones. Oh, okay, that's yeah. That's where it all came from. Then you got me because yeah, that's my that's my favorite fantasy series. I love. I I just really hope that he finishes that series. <laughs> Yeah, I know he's apparently not in good health. No, but and I've been no. asking about it too. About you know, has he got it in? Well, of course, uh, it's not in editing yet because that's I have to know that because I still got my guys. Right. But, yeah. But uh, yeah, that it's and oh, unfortunately, you have to forgive me. There is one change we have to make to the dynasty system because the beta testers are screaming, and that is, you can't. You're in when you arrange marriages. A daughter does not just become part of the other family. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got. To, we're sending it so it can be both ways. Originally, we're going to have where a daughter goes into the husband's family, but oh. the beta testers threw a fit. But in in Westron, in you know Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. daughters end up. You have a daughter. She goes to the husband's family. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But uh, I don't. That's not. I don't think I can use that. Well, in the book, we stole this idea from. Yeah. This. <laughs> we we have credit here from this book we stole. <laughs> yeah. See, we're yeah. honest. You can trust us. Yeah. This book and this algorithm. Yeah. What's after Element? What's uh, what's on the horizon for that? After that. Oh well, we there's an RPG that's in pre-production here. No. Oh, and wow. uh, there's still. There's a, a couple other projects I can't talk about that are pretty big, and there's still we. I want at some point the team is really anxious to get back to Galaxalizations at some point, but yeah. it could be a while because Elemental is gonna. I, I'm I'm planning to take some time off uh, and become an Elemental modder. Oh, cool! For uh, after the game ships, I want to. I, I'm getting you know I'll be hitting forty in another couple years, and I'd really like to be able to sit down with my kids who are now why my oldest is a teenager and, and get them into Python and programming like I did. And that's when I was that age, I was starting to get into programming and use elemental as the, okay, let's try to make a temple of Apshai game with this, or let's make a, uh, you know, let's try to uh, make a, some other game with, you know, with using mods and, and Python. Very cool. Make it the family business. Well, I, I just think it'd be a good time to spend time, you know, with my kids while I still oh, can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and this would be a thing we could do together. That'd be kind of I'm a I, I'm a modder at heart. I enjoy modding games. Um, cool. Much more than than 
this this making stuff from scratch stuff. I mean, you have to do it once in a while. But like Galactizations two was really a mod of Galactizations one, which was really a mod of the corporate machine, which was a mod of entrepreneur. <laughs> It also yeah. sounds like I mean, you talked about you know taking things from like Starcraft and that it sounds like there's a lot being taken from like Neverwinter Nights too. To, to um, have... I'm I'm not sure. No, I, I mean I don't I don't think so. Not on, in terms of uh, there is I mean there's quest and elemental, but I would say I'm trying to think it's not really that Baldur's Gate ish. I mean I'll certainly borrow from that when we do the RPG. Okay, I, I have no shame, but <laughs> but I, I would say elemental borrows the most. From Master of Magic. I think I mean more of just from what the way you're sound like you're trying to build the tools for the community. I, it's it's insane to me when I go on to like the, the vault at IGN or things that there are so many people still plugging away at the first Neverwinter Nights with mods that it sounds like you're giving the the community enough tools to keep them going for years. I'm I, I hope so because I know I mean as you know I want to do the I I want to do mods for it myself and so i mean there is some benefit that if, if there's an api missing in our engine i can make them bad it's so yeah. exposed it so i can make a mod because i plan to not use anything other than what's publicly available to make my mods and if therefore if i can make it someone else can i don't want to expect to have to have access to the source code to do these mods and mm-hmm. i want to make i mean i should be able to, if i want to make a real-time strategy game out of elemental with as a mod i should be able to do that if i want to make an rpg out of elemental with mod i should be able to do that i mean or if i want to make a civilization game right with with the engine i should be able to do that you know you answered my one question about um what are some of the genres that you'd like to get into outside of these and i think you know you said the rpg is that well we still have society out there too which is it's not dead um the engine that Elemental use came from Society, and that's our okay. mass multiplayer uh, game that we're working on. But it's gotcha. we haven't gone forward on that part of the on that game because just the infrastructure necessary to do MMO uh, is just beyond our, was beyond our capability at the time, and still beyond our capability. Uh, right. I, they, I'm friends with uh, a lot of guys at Blizzard. And so we, uh, from years and years ago, back we did the StarCraft add-on years ago. Um, this is back in the late, seemed like in the late nineties. So mm-hmm. we got to know a lot of the guys there, and they they kind of clued me in on just what's involved in making World Warcraft run. I mean, you're talking thousands of employees, yeah, to run that. Mm-hmm. So once that happened, it's like, okay, yeah, we're not going to be. Uh, we're not going to be doing that for a bit. And you, it probably doesn't help that you've seen all these other companies try to go after that market and, and not capture it, and, and a lot of them close down. Yeah, well, that, that's part of it. And the, I mean, the thing is, is I, well, those were, this is a, and society's a strategy game too, so it's a little, it's a little bit different. But I don't, we would have to, I mean, we're, we have about 70 people. We're, we are so far away from literally having the infrastructure necessary to run an MMO that it would be just ridiculous to even try right now. I mean, right. it's not even a matter of if only we had the money. It's like, let's say we were given a, a billion dollars. Well, you'd still have to go out and hire thousands of people. And you have to get and, thousands of people to come to Michigan. <laughs> yeah, you tell me about it. I mean, it's funny. The uh, the state comes out here on occasion to visit some you know, politician or whatever will visit us. And because we are in Michigan, we are essentially, as far as I know, and I could be mistaken, but I think we're the only... Uh, PC, you know, game studio of that's of any size. Yeah, I, mean, I think so. There's yeah. probably guys and working out of their house or something, or but making iPhone apps. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, in terms of having office building with teams of developers, and you know, I point out, uh, pretty much everyone here is from out of state. Mm-hmm. Because that seems to be the only people we can get for. <laughs> well, I mean, we have really hot. We're really picky on who we hire too. But oh yeah. But it's, but anyway, yeah, getting getting a thousand IT professionals here would be a, a big pain in the butt. And I, when I was saying, but World of Warcraft's infrastructure isn't just, you know, there's thousands of people in support, thousands of people who just do IT managing servers all around the world, and that, and it's just that's just crazy. For, I mean, forget the money, just the time to do that. So. Right. We're still going to go forward with society, but we may modify the way we're doing it. Like, uh, if Elemental's server system works, we may do society in such a way where the infrastructure is ad hoc. That is, 
users can set up their it's clustered because Blizzard owns their own servers, right? For World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. We may do it where users can set up their own servers and they automatically hook to each other. So the infrastructure actually becomes organic. You know, kind of a BitTorrent ish type thing. Gotcha. Well, cool. Um, what that are, <clears throat> excuse me, the RPG that you were mentioning is going to be based in the elemental world? It would, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, sounds great. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was fantastic having you on again, Brad. Oh, no problem. I enjoy it. We want to thank Brad once again for uh, being on uh, for the second time. Uh, really hope that he comes on again when the game gets released. Uh, and personally, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, well, see you next time on Multiplaying. Bye. Yay. Well, gentlemen, no point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait. Where are you going? I was going to make espresso. Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the plants are going to die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplaying, the companion podcast at Multiplaying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to Multiplaying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs, often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night. Dead Workers Party Network. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world.